I lived half of my life in the Arctic. And I'm a very big fan of salmon fly fishing in those remote rivers. So when you're walking long distances, you're in tranquil environment, no one troubles you. Your mind is not polluted with noise. Nothing. Purity. More than 20 years ago, it was a moment, really like great moment when I sat on one of these top hills and I looked around and I said, who am I? Where are my aspirations? What I want to create? What I need for this? It's not about strategy, because strategy without vision is a bridge to nowhere. It's not about feeding my ego, I want to be rich or famous. It's nothing about this. What would make me happy? What would make me satisfied? And I realized that I need to have a vision, but what vision is, wasn't available at all. And I decided to explore it myself. I have trained leaders from 40 countries so far. They have one trait in common. They want to be visionaries. Very simple. It's about their decision. If you are prepared to be committed to something great, you will do it. I will help you. My name's Dr. Gary Crotez, and I'm a coach, podcaster, and award-winning author of The Idea Mindset, a book about how to figure out what you want and how to get it. The unlock moment is that flash of remarkable clarity when you suddenly know the right path ahead. When I'm in conversation with my coaching clients, these are the breakthroughs that are so profound that they remember vividly where they were, who they were with, what they were thinking when their unlock moment happened. In this podcast, I'll be meeting and learning about people who have accomplished great things or brought about significant change in their life. And you'll be meeting them with me. We'll be finding out what inspired them, how they got through the hard times and what they learned along the way that they can share with you. Thank you for joining me on this podcast to hear all about another Unlock Moment. Hello, dear listener, and welcome to another episode of the Unlock Moment podcast. These days, so many people, so many leaders I work with describe themselves as stuck on the hamster wheel, firefighting the daily crises and struggling to find time, get their head up and properly look to the future. So it's perhaps timely that today I'm welcoming one of the world's foremost authorities on vision and visionary leadership to the podcast. Dr. Oleg Konovalov is a global thought leader, author, business educator, consultant and C-suite coach. He speaks all over the world and gained his doctorate in business from Durham University here in the UK. Oleg is named among the top eight global leaders in leadership and shortlisted for the Distinguished Award in Leadership by Thinkers 50. He's the number one global leading coach in the Marshall Goldsmith Thinkers 50 Awards. Some call him the Da Vinci of visionary leadership. Oleg is considered number one in the world in the field of vision and visionary leadership. He's the author of The Vision Code, Leaderology and other books. I'm looking forward to hearing Oleg's perspective on what makes for a powerful vision, how we figure out what ours is, and how we can stop hurtling round that hamster wheel to pick our heads up and build for the future. But my regular listeners will know this podcast is as much about who you are as what you think. I'm curious to learn about the unlock moments of remarkable clarity that helped Oleg to shape his path ahead. Dr. Oleg Konovalov, it's my very great pleasure to welcome you to the unlock moment. Kari, thank you very much for having me on your show. I'm grateful, honored, and humbled. Thank you. Oh, it's my great pleasure to have you. Thank you. So before we look forward to future vision, take us back. Where do we need to start in your story to understand the person you are today? I can't say that I had just one light bulb moment. No, life put me through different events, tests, circumstances. I have gone from facing Storm 11 in the North Atlantic on a small trawler to that room at Sinkers 50, you know. So it's not just like, wow, overnight success. I think success is always momentary, but it 
demands a long term or is a result of a long term commitment. Mm-hmm. And so this is a journey. There are a few things what I realized. The first one, it was a moment when I was facing a really, really tough professional crisis with a lot of losses. It's just like, it still hurts when i uh, recording it. But it was a great lesson for me. At a certain point, I sat and I asked myself a simple question. What is greater, my goals or my problems? Of course, my goals must be greater. Therefore, why am I focusing on problems? Many people are focusing on problems and they're fighting them. You can't kill them. They're like midges, millions of them around us. You can't kill them all. It's all about finding solutions or a grand solution to live a happy life, run a meaningful business. So think beyond the problems. Our life is defined not by a number of problems that we have solved, but it's defined by a number of solutions that we have found that made us, us, our lives, our businesses better, better, and better. Otherwise, we will die exhausted fighting problems instead of being, hey, I lived a satisfactory life. And you touched on being an efficient trawler in the North Atlantic. Tell me more about that part of your life. Oh, it was long ago, 30 years ago. Mm. I was a second engineer on a a British deep sea trawlers. And actually, I've gone from being on a trawler to a CEO position. And I was only the crazy guy who was in the fishing industry who has gone for a master's degree, then for a doctoral degree. So I was considered a lunatic within the industry, whilst being quite a shark within Mm. that industry. It's about exploring what you could do better. Mm. It's not about being a hostage of a routine. You just mentioned that many people are like hamsters in a wheel. Mm. They're running. Well, okay, maybe they assume that they could produce an electricity and save on the bills, but it doesn't work that way. They're producing sweat. They don't produce meaning. Everything about what we do is to create a meaning, a value for others. Mm. And therefore, they're thinking about single point where they want to be. If we think of a simple difference, my area is vision. And people believe that vision is just a dream or some kind of a statement, which is wrong. Vision is a space, a space of value space of meaning, and you can scale it, make it greater. Think of a difference. Being married or having a happy family. Being married is a single point. It's just tick a box. I'm married. It's a past. It's all about the past. Done. Having a happy family is a space where all family members are happy, and this demands vision. The same about business. I talk many times to different CEOs from different countries, from different industries. I'm a CEO, and what? More or less, it sounds like I'm CEO'd, I'm crowned. Done, tick a box. But if we talk about leading people, this is a space. And this space must be clearly defined and based on the vision. So the greatness of your success is defined by the greatness of your vision, not the greatness of your status. When was the first time in your journey when you felt that sense of your own personal vision? I lived half of my life in the Arctic, right? And I'm a very big fan of salmon fly fishing in those remote rivers, so you're walking long distances, you're in tranquil environment, no one troubles you, your mind is not polluted with noise, with all that news, you know, <laughs> phone calls, nothing. Purity. Clear purity. And more than 20 years ago, it was a moment, really like great moment when I sat on one of these top hills. 
And I looked around and I said, who am I? Where are my aspirations? What I want to create? What I need for this? It's not about strategy, because strategy without vision is a bridge to nowhere. It's not about feeding my ego. I want to be rich or famous. It's nothing about this. What would make me happy? What would make me satisfied? And I realized that I need to have a vision, but what vision is wasn't available at all. So, and I decided to explore it myself. <laughs> Therefore, I took a simple definition. If it's not available, I will create it. A few months ago, I had uh, a colleague of yours, Richard Oshibanjo, another Marshall Goldsmith 100 yeah. coach. I on trained the podcast. him. He's been through my uh, certification course. Amazing. He did this amazing interview on, on the podcast. And there's a particular thing that he said that really resonates with what you just said. He said, there was a moment when he said, I know I have purpose. It's the plan of the rest of my life to figure out what that purpose is. And what you're saying there, I knew I had vision, but I didn't know what it was yet. And I think that's really interesting because I think that people get stuck on, I can't name it. I can't define it. I can't put words to it. Ah, that's a great feeling. Karir, let's look at it from a very different angle. One of the most difficult questions that adult could answer is, what is your aspiration? The more mature we become, the less we are prepared to answer this question. And therefore, if you would think of yourself being younger, braver, and you would think, hey, what are my aspirations? You know, you will think differently because you will think far beyond today, far beyond tomorrow, because you will think, what I want to create? In this sense, it would be very clear. Purpose doesn't define what you would create. Because many people consider, oh, I have a calling. This is my purpose. No. My purpose is to explore a new field. My purpose is to find grand solutions to grand problems or to explore something that was not touched before, for instance, in the area of leadership. That is purpose. But I can't pass this purpose to anyone. I can't share it. It's purely mine. Therefore, I must have a vision for it. What I will create as a result, what I will share with others, what kind of a space it will define. And that would make a huge difference. And therefore, your vision will reshape your purpose to something more focused, more productive. Mm. And it's not about goals, because goals are step stones mm. on, on the way how you're reaching that vision. For instance, you need to explore and do some research. Goal done. You can share it with others. It's your goal. <laughs> Therefore, it's very much about vision, what you could leave behind. Something that I've mused on for a long time, and, and I wrote a little bit about it in, in my book, The Idea Mindset, is this idea of you can't think to a deadline. When you ask people to, you know, tell me by Friday what your vision is, people might come up with some words, they might come up with a point of view, but it might not really be their vision, because I think that often these things, they come to you over time at the right time when your mind is ready to receive it. How do you know, how does a person know that the vision they've come to is the right one, is the true answer, is the direction they should be heading for? I would say filters or sets of filters. One, if you could, it's so simple and strong that you could easily shade with a 10-year-old, right? And this boy or girl would understand what you're talking about and see the value of it. It must be much greater than you and or your business. It's not about your ambitions. Or you could look at it from a very pragmatic point. Six elements. What is stimulus? What's the value for people do you offer? So they will respond immediately. Is it scalable? Because it's a space, as I mentioned. You can't scale a point, but you could scale a space. 
are you considering yourself being fully responsible for it? Is it relevant? To what extent it's simple? And can I see that passion that drives your vision and makes others passionate about it? Mm. So there are different elements. So when people think, oh, you should come up, you could come up with a statement, but it wouldn't be a vision. Vision demands deep thinking, demands a lot of effort to create. Then you would make it productive, effective, simple, and scalable. Mm. I really like that idea of a vision as a space because a lot of people, I think, think of the vision statement and they think of seven, ten words and we need to get exactly the right words uh, and it needs to be measurable and there needs to be numbers in it maybe. And you're saying that that doesn't help you because it's fixed. It's, it's a point. That's it. Yeah, that idea of space is, is very interesting. How clearly defined does it really need to be? You know, somebody may be in their 20s or 30s and are thinking about their life ahead. They might have no idea really where they're going to be in their life or career, you know, 20 years ahead. How specific do they need to be? <laughs> we will live the life that we will create for ourselves. Hmm. You're either a hostage or you are a winner. That makes a difference because it's not about, oh, I would gain this or I will have that. It's not about this. It's about where you are going to be, at what mm-hmm. level, mm-hmm. in business, or how happy you're going to be within your family. If we talk about 20 or 30 years old, I'm working on a great project now. I want to make vision a lifestyle of the next generations. And it's not just because I have that crazy idea. I've talked to many young leaders from Bahrain, Mexico, USA, UK, and the, many of them said, look, I'm not interested in the latest Nike shoes. I'm interested in making my life meaningful. That's what would make me successful. Mm-hmm. They're both thinkers because they're brought up on examples of great visionaries like Elon Musk mm-hmm. or Steve Jobs, right? They have really interesting icons for their lives. They want to be free. They don't want to repeat the mistakes of their parents, and they want to be free by knowing themselves where do they go and what they want to create. You know, and they are not limited. Their aspirations are still alive. You know, they did not shoot (laughs) their aspirations as we adults tend to do. And therefore, inspiration is very important for them. The older we grow, we talk more about motivation because we need to motivate ourselves oh, to push through the door, you know, and have a walk in a bad weather. I need to be motivated. You know, they are not. They need inspiration to do more and more and more. Mm-hmm. So what they will create now will define their life. Whatever its trajectory it will take, it doesn't matter they will be greater than us. Hmm. That's really interesting. And are you seeing the younger generations, the, the Gen Z and even the, you know, the Gen Alpha coming after, are you seeing their visions being different from Gen X millennials at that same age? No, no. Actually, no, that's a phenomenal. What they want to do, you see, visionaries are all the same across the globe, regardless of age or gender, or nationality. It's all about what I could create for others in a big way. So they're not looking for excuses why not to do, which is uh, very common. Oh, yeah, I will have a, I'm busy now, but I will think about my vision next year. Whew, you lost your life, <laughs> you know, and they're just saying, no, 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 I don't have it. I must do it now. Therefore, mm-hmm. they're very good at this, and I can't see a difference at all between those who are like 50 years old and those who are 25 years old. Mm-hmm. They're very good at this. Mm-hmm. 
I saw some research recently from Gallup where they had looked at natural leadership talents. And they said, in a group of 10 people, one of the 10 has such natural leadership capability, they need little development, little training, little mentoring. They're just great natural leaders. Another two in 10 have got the basic capabilities and they need some development through coaching and training and mentoring and so on. And seven in 10 shouldn't be leaders in the population. Mm -hmm. And yet, when you look at who gets placed into positions of leadership, actually, most of the time, those are not the group of people with the natural talents for leadership. You said, uh, I saw somewhere, you said, a very small proportion of modern leaders have vision. Uh, Gary, my apologies, but I must correct you. Not a small proportion, a small fraction. Mm -hmm. Because less than 0.1% of modern leaders have vision. The rest are speculating on it. Okay. They talk about deadlines. They talk about profits. The, oh, this year profit. It's our vision. You know, we will reach that level. Oh, we'll, our vision is to be in, like, selling our product into 10 countries. It's not a vision. It's just a goal. Mm -hmm. You know, therefore, they're over-speculating it. Or they're pushing forward their ego. We want to be number one in the world or, I don't know, whatever the ranking. doesn't inspire anyone. You're simply feeding your ego, right? And therefore... Vision is not a statement. It's not fancy words like, you know, as I said, it's a space, but it demands deep thinking. Vision is not a gift. Vision is a way of thinking. Unfortunately, majority of leaders these days are good at holding one thought for an average 10 seconds only. Vision demands deep thinking. I will give you another example. Curry, you are great at ballroom dancing. <laughs> you sweet. <laughs> I'm just like fascinating because that's so beautiful. I'm just like, oh, how many hours of improvement have you put mm. into this? Many. <laughs> About 30 many. years. Right. 30 years of improvement. What I'm always saying, I never saw any taxi driver becoming a Formula One pilot. Mm-hmm. But they're all good if you talk to them. They're at a level, thinking at a level of a prime minister of any country, whatever. They're all good at everything, you know. They're just busy driving. So majority of leaders are very good at defending own grounds and criticizing those who do think beyond ordinary. Mm -hmm. Leadership is about leading people into the future and creating a value for people in the future. It's not about the present. Mm. Think of a simple line. The past is ego. The present is humility. The future is pride. What I will create in the future is more important than we do now. Regardless of problems, challenges, abilities, competences. And as you said, Seven out of ten are just, well, well, say, can be trained to a level of leader. But if they are committed, they will create that future. So here's the critical question. Less than 0.1% of modern leaders have vision. Yep. Are they the only people who can be visionary? Or can anybody or can most leaders be trained and developed to become visionary? I have trained leaders from 40 countries so far. They have one trait in common. They want to be visionaries. Very simple. It's about their decision. It's not their choice. Oh, I want to be a visionary because it's a nice choice. We are not at McDonald's. It's not about choices. It's about decision because it demands Commitment and responsibility. If you are prepared to be committed to something great, you will do it. I will help you. Because this is an algorithm. How to do it. Those who are saying, hey, I want to be a millionaire, they're simply feeding their ego. They wouldn't be vision. 
In your book, Division Code, your subtitle is how to create and execute a compelling vision for your business. So tell me a little bit about how you translate this space, this vision into something that that works, that makes a difference, that changes things, that, that you can take people on a journey with you? How do you go into execution? First of all, execution is about strong leadership. And strong leadership is not about that trendy consensus. We're looking for consensus when we don't know where to go. We're just simply trying to please everyone. It doesn't work. Look at political elections, right, in any country. The candidates, they're always trying to please the majority of population. They never execute their promises. They're just promising. You must be firm and clear, showing people where to go. Therefore, you must be very good at envisioning and maintaining strong corporate culture, very productive. And it's not just like, we will improve this, we will improve that. No, it's about how to get that in the energy of organization together, in achievement of that vision. Everything you do is about people. Vision or strategy without people is just a pile of paper. Nothing else. It's all about people. You must be very good at maintaining focus and will. When I coach people, I always tend to ask one question. Where is your focus? What are three critical, four critical actions you need to be focused on? You can't focus on 20 things, but you could focus on three, four, five maximum. And then I'm asking a tricky question. How much a lack of focus cost you? Well, because people don't know on what they must be focused, they are losing between 20 to 80% of their productivity. You can't execute a vision if you are not focused on something greater than today's goals. It's about maintaining focus and will. It's about enabling decision making. It's about clear metrics of execution. So it's not just fun. Oh, we have done this quarter greatly, you know, with a great profit or with a great sales or great KPIs. What are the metrics? Are we really achieved something on the way to our vision or not? What's a great example of a leader or a business that has really cracked shaping and defining a great vision and bringing it to life to really move themselves or their, or their organization forward? You know this famous company, WD-40, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which was led until recently by Gary Rich for 33 years. And I love talking to Gary because mm -hmm. every time I learn from him a great deal of something. And we are friends, and I have that privilege to ask <laughs> him whatever I just need to know. And Gary is so generous, he's just like sharing his experience. Imagine a company which actually is a medium-sized company, 520 people across the globe working for WD-40, but their capitalization is $3.5 billion dollars. The employee engagement rate is the highest in the world, 93.5%. Say more than nine people out of 10 doing their best every day. They're in 176 countries, and they have a very simple vision, but very profound, very strong, to create positive, long-lasting memories every day for everyone. And they're good at this, very good at this. It's really interesting. Gary came on the podcast about a year ago. Um, oh. I'll put a link to his conversation in the show notes. It's, as you say, is a really powerful conversation. He is a hugely inspiring and very, very humble leader. And there's some remarkable things that they did in that business that were, I think, quite countercultural to normal management philosophy. They took out the word manager in their business and they changed managers into coaches. They completely changed the way of thinking about 
culture? More or less, they took out that mid-level managers. Hmm. You either leading and coaching your team or you out. And they made it productive. Hmm. Look, I don't need a middle person between me and my wife. <laughs> I don't want to anyone to stand between me and my son. Hmm. That's simple. It's so simple. I love that. I love that. If someone's listening to this, and they're, maybe they're a leader with a capital L or a leader with a small L, and they're thinking, this is great, but I'm on the hamster wheel. I have not got time to step back and do this big thinking. Honestly, if I get to the end of the week and I've done my to-do list, you know, I'm okay. How do people get from that place of going, I'm overwhelmed by stuff, to I can start doing some of this big thinking? Gary? It's a great excuse. It's an excellent excuse. I can't stop being a taxi driver. You know, hey, man, stop a car, step out, and think what you could do better. It's one thing. You must realize, if you would be as a hamster in a wheel without thinking something about something huge and big, every day your chances to live a better life are shrinking. Are you a CEO of your life or you are a hostage of circumstances? To learn that algorithm, how to create a strong vision, is actually doesn't demand a lot of time. It demands a deep thinking and a deep reflection. I have like a video course, how to create a strong vision for life. It's two hours. You could learn it in a simple way. If you want to be certified as a great visionary, global leader, four days online, done. And after that, if people are saying, I don't have time to change my life, I can't do much. Hmm. You could bring a horse to water, but you can't make a horse to drink. Hmm. So step one is that moment of stopping, getting out of the taxi. One of the greatest reasons why vision is important, yeah, is because it defines our life, it de defines our why, it's a ladder to success. But one of the greatest reasons is it's a mean of breaking out of unsatisfactory present. It's not about complaining, I'm tired, I'm exhausted, I'm not happy, uh, I want to change it. It's not about complaining. If you see a reason, yes, I want to change something, then change it. Create a vision and go there. But people love complaining. Think, what is the most common gift people share between each other? Can you think? Which one? What's wrong with their life? Exactly. Hmm. They're gifting to each other their nasty problems and they don't want to solve those problems themselves they want others to solve problems for them in a way you should solve my problem in that way otherwise you're not my friend i love the simple clarity of what you're saying and i think that that will really resonate with people i think people will find this actually a really helpful kind of provocative stimulus to change and i think that's powerful Gary, another thing is, if you think, how many people are good at making conclusions? For instance, they watch the movie. And if you would ask them a few minutes after, what conclusions you could make out of that great movie? Ah, oh, it was interesting. Okay, it's not a conclusion. They read a phenomenal book and they think, oh, it was interesting. What's a conclusion or conclusions? So it shows the lack of clarity. It's more of a chaos in their minds. Why? Because their thoughts are not structured. When you have a vision, your thoughts are clear and structured, and therefore you are much more productive, much more effective. And when you are clear, you need less resources to achieve your vision. We had many stories about people who started from nothing and achieved something great. And say, oh, I wish I had, would have resources. No, your mindset is your main resource. It's your main asset. 
But if you believing in money, that you need a lot of money to create something great, you would never have it. You can't buy a meaning with money. You must create that meaning. I love it. Oleg, like, how can people find out more about you and the work you do? How can they find these courses that you do? Uh, it's all on my website, olegkonavalov.com. I'm fairly responsive on LinkedIn. And I do answer people messages either through my contact form or my email or LinkedIn messages. I do answer them myself. Fantastic. And we'll put links to all those sites in the show notes for the podcast. The Unlock Moment is that flash of remarkable clarity when you suddenly know the right path ahead. For world-leading visionary and C-suite coach Dr. Oleg Konovalov, it was salmon fishing in the Arctic, asking himself the simple yet hard questions, who am I, what are my aspirations, that sparked a lifelong mission to help people, leaders, to find and execute a compelling vision. Find his latest book, The Vision Code, how to create and execute a compelling vision for your business on Amazon and at all great bookstores. Oleg, it's been a real pleasure. Thank you so much for joining me today on the Unlock Moment. Gary, thank you very much. I enjoyed the conversation. Thanks a lot. Thank you. If you've enjoyed this conversation with the top expert in how to grow your leadership skills, then check out episode 41 with former WD40 company CEO, Gary Rich. And if you've resonated with Oleg's guidance and ideas on how to form and communicate your vision, then check out episode 69 on the topic of purpose with Dr. Richard Oshabanjo and episode 77 on visual communication with Todd Churches. Bookmark these episodes for later. This has been The Unlock Moment, a podcast with me, Dr. Gary Crotez. Thank you for listening in. You can find out more about how to figure out what you want and how to get it in my book, The Idea Mindset. Find me on Instagram at Dr. Gary Crotez and subscribe to this podcast to get notified about future episodes. Most listeners to this podcast on Apple and Spotify haven't yet hit the follow button. If there's one thing you can do right now to help me out, then please click the follow button. The more followers I have, the better guests I can attract for you to learn from. Thanks again for listening and join me again soon here on the Unlock Moment.